What is truth? Pilate wants to know the answer. Of all the questions that are asked in the Gospel of John, Pilate asked the most questions. Did you know that? He asked more questions than anyone. And his questions are, as a good governor, very fact-finding for the most part. Just the facts. Uh, what charge is brought up against him? Are you a king? On and on he asked these questions, but there's one question in the middle of all his questions that, that's more than, it's more than uh, informational. It's, uh, it's deeper than that, isn't it? It's a question that's philosophical, maybe even existential. Pilate wants to know, what is truth? And I'm really glad that he asked that question. I needed to ask it, too. How about you? I'm, I'm looking for truth, looking for a, a bright light in the darkness, a north star. I, I want to I hear something true. I want to say something true. I'm looking for truth. I'm looking for truth in, uh, in a world where it seems like uh, truth is kind of blurry and kind of fuzzy. Depending on the news channel that you are watching, truth could have a very different slant, couldn't it? What is true? We, we cry out <laughs> on, our, on our way out. We, we ask on our way in too. What is, what is truth? What is truth? And I wrestled with this a lot this week and, and I thought about is, is truth, is it, uh, is it the facts? Is it uh, accurate information? Like if, if you only had the accurate information, if you only, just the fact, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help, me, so help me God, the truth. Is it accurate information? Is it, is it facts? Then if you have the right facts and somebody else has the wrong facts, then, then you have the truth and, and they don't. Is that, is that what truth is or is there more to truth than that? Um, I don't know about you, but, but there, is, uh, there is something more important than having the facts right, and that's relationship. And you might find yourself at, at a Thanksgiving table with uh, people sitting across from you and they have a very different truth. Really? Is, is dad's truth different from granddad's truth? Is, uh, and, and so maybe you don't want to, uh, to bring things up, certain things that, that might uh, cause for some friction at the Thanksgiving table. Do you know what I mean? For, for instance, the truth is the banjo is really the greatest instrument, <laughs> but my grandfather swears up and down that it's the fiddle. Is the truth a belief system? Is it what we believe? It, that happens in my family, maybe not yours. Maybe it's something else. Is it personal and subjective, this truth? Does it depend on your cultural value system? Does it pe depend on your unique personal experiences, this thing called truth? Is it, a, is it a personal thing? Like we all have these little truths that sometimes get conflicted. And, or, or, is it, or is it more than that? Yeah, it's more than that because we all know that some truth is for everyone. Is there truth for everyone? I thought about this a lot this week when I thought about our, our nation and especially the, the line in the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal 
and endowed with certain unalienable rights, such as the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, truth for everyone. And then I thought of the truth of, of our faith, the, the great commandment, the, the one that's true for, for us all. We are to love God and to love our neighbors. Love is truth. But then you might think, well, what about this? What, what is, is truth? Is it honesty? Think about it. Is it honesty? Do I have something on my face? Is it, is it telling the truth? Is it honesty? That's a, a very interesting question because you see, I love what Soren Kierkegaard said. He said, he said, some things are true when whispered, but not when shouted. Some things are true when whispered, but not when shouted. You see, giving the truth without love is hurtful, isn't it? It's mean. I'm reminded of a, of a story. You've maybe heard this story before. This truck driver, he, he comes in from a long, long drive on the road, and he, he pulls into the truck stop, and he asks the waitress, he said, he said ma'am, all I, all I want is a, is a slice of apple pie and a kind word. And so she goes away for a second and she slides the apple pie over and uh, she puts down his fork and his napkin and his knife and, and she turns around and walks away. And he said, ma'am, how about the kind word? And she turns back around and she comes closer and she says, if I were you, I wouldn't eat that pie. <laughs> it was honest, right? Is that what truth is? Is it, is it honesty? Or, or is there more to it than that? We, we studied for so long. We studied for 27 weeks on, on uh, the, the letter of, of 1 John. And, and we get to see this, this theme of truth over and over again in John's gospel. John is the, the writer of, of the gospel and of the epistle. They're very, he's very concerned for, for truth. What is truth? It's one of these main themes that keeps coming up over and over and over again. Truth. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the truth. And, and then we, we have this uh, in, in John's gospel. I want you to check this out. John, John says this, and I'm sorry, in his epistle, he says this. Can I get it? Come on now. Next one. There it is. Back up. Dear children. Let us not love with words or speech, but with, it, with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. For the writer of the epistle of John, the elder, truth is reality. That if Christ is true to you, the reality of Christ is true to you. He even says it like this in the message. My dear children, let us not just talk about love. Let's practice real love. This is the only way we'll know we're living truly, living in God's reality. It's neat to think about truth as, as reality. What is, what is reality? What is really real and true for us? My, my friend Paul Escamilla mentions truth as, as the familiar seen in a whole new way. Truth is the familiar seen in a whole new way. Have you ever, have you ever experienced this in church where you've, you've had a scripture that you've known your whole life and then for you, suddenly it takes on a whole new meaning, a deeper truth because of what you're going through. The familiar seen in a whole new way. Maybe the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And you see this in a whole new way. Martin Luther, the great Martin Luther, he, he, uh, he, he was so hard on himself as a, as a 
Augustinian monk, and he was really treating himself as more of a jailer, treating Christ as more of a jailer than a savior. Until one day he, he heard someone praying the Apostles' Creed, going through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. He said it was like a lightning bolt, that it was as if Jesus said, I'm not a jailer, I'm a savior. Your sins are forgiven. The familiar experienced in a whole new way. And I think that that's the wisdom of the Christian year. I've shown you this before, and, and I found this. This is a, uh, it's used in godly play. And, uh, and this is uh, 52 weeks in the Christian year. And you know what? We tell the same true story every single year. Same true story. And right here, here we are. Last week was All Saints Sunday, and next week is Christ the King Sunday, and then we begin this season again of, of preparing for the Christmas event. God with us, and then a season of epiphany, our eyes being opened, and then, and then a season of Lent. A season of Lent as, as we celebrate that Christ is with us in our struggle, beside us in our struggle. And then, and then the death and resurrection. And Easter being such a mystery, it spills over for six Sundays. And then we have Pentecost again, God breathing into us new life. And then a season of ordinary time, the great growing Sundays of the year. And then here we are again at Advent. Here we are again at All Saints Sunday. Here we are again at Advent, and we say to one another, Christmas has new meaning for me this year as I see it through the eyes of my children. It carries a deeper truth for me now. The familiar seen in a whole new way. And then, and then some of you at All Saints Sunday, you, you see this with new lenses of loss. Maybe it's been years ago or maybe just this past year where you've experienced great loss. And we say to each other, for me, this year, Easter has a whole new meaning. It carries a deeper truth. And all that we know to be true, all that we experience this, this cycle, this life, all of this, all of this is in God's hands because we believe that he holds it all, the future, the past, the present, all in his hands. As I, as I sing each week to my special needs friends at the daycare center right beside the ministry center. He's got the whole world in his hands. And you know what? They believe that to be true. And when I sing that to them, and I think if they believe that to be true, well then so can I. I can believe that to be true too. And I think that's what we mean when we say, in God we trust. There's a scripture that really helped me out a whole lot this week, and it would have, no matter what, maybe you too, it's this. Do not put your trust in princes and human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. What is truth? Pilate wants to know. Jesus says, nothing. No recorded answer to that question. He said, it is for this reason that I came into the world to testify to the truth, to bear witness to the truth. You know the words bear witness you know what word that is in the Greek? Martyr. 
It's the word martyr. In other words, he came to give his life for the truth. And he says that those who are in the truth, those who minnows, those who abide in the truth, they, they hear my voice. And then Pilate says, what is truth? And there are no recorded words for the answer. And I believe it is, this, it is if to say, the answer was Jesus standing there as if to say truth is not a concept or, or a value system or any of these things. Ultimate truth is a person who lived, died, and was raised from the dead. He stands there as if to say truth is a person. And maybe truth is nothing more than that which is lived out in those who are true. Those whose compassion is predictable. Those whose love is, is known and can be depended on. May we bear witness to the truth May we know the truth. May we be a people who hear his voice. There are so many voices, so many slants, so many ways of looking at things, so many, so many disagreements and discussions. And, and I, didn't find, I didn't find it on the news and I didn't find it in Facebook. I found it in people who are true. And it doesn't matter if they agree on one thing or the other. It's one of the reasons why I love this church so much is, is I get to preach to people that don't agree on everything. That's awesome. You know what we would be if we all agreed on everything all the time? A cult. <laughs> We're not a cult. We're a church where conversations can happen and people can listen to one another. And at the end of the day, we see the most important thing. The most important thing is, is how we love. How we love. How we go out from this place and we love. How we go to places like the ministry center and we love. How we see one another in need. How we see a world in need and we, and we give what we have and we care because we love. Because ultimately our truth is that we love God and that we love one another. And all the rest of it is just fading away and passing away and amount to nothing. What is true? What is truth?